It's been a few months now that I've been doing Hamlin. And last week I shared a video about my Hamlin consultation and how that went. And of course I am so much more enthused than ever because of the person he is, but also his perspective. And in that video, I realized that there were some gaps. I did not share really the questions I asked or questions that you can ask. And I think in general, there is more room for me to just create straightforward tips that you can take now that I have, now that I'm much more versed in this method and I'm much more opinionated about it. So that's what we're gonna cover. My own tips, tips I got from Hamlin, and questions I wish I asked that I didn't ask. So let's get into the tips. First of all, if you haven't done a type of low impact Pilates type, aerobics type workout, there's gonna be somewhat of a learning curve. Not that it's so much challenging to learn, but there's gonna be moments likely where you think, there's no way this is working because you don't leave the workout feeling overly taxed. I don't leave the workout having this adrenaline rush, but throughout the day, I just feel cleaner, leaner, lighter. I don't feel overly hungry. That probably sums up in general why I love this workout so much. There are times I probably do miss having an adrenaline rush that comes with a workout, but I don't miss the aches and pains and like bearing down on my joints and being overly hungry and just depleted. Not to mention, I love the results that this workout is bringing. So for anybody, I would recommend that you start by going to the Hamlin Facebook group and using that as a resource. That is tip number one, because any questions you have or any uncertainty you have, it's been felt in the group before. It's very supportive, it's a very supportive following and everything is just very kind and accepting and it's, it's a great support group. And within that support group is a complimentary three week rotation that gives you a nice sampling of different Hamlin workouts because Hamlin has a wide variety of options. Why is that great to know? Well, it's going to help you determine which Hamlin path you want to go down. So there's different options. Some are more cardio based, some are more like Pilates type based. But if you can do that three week rotation, take note of the workouts you like, what you liked about them, how you're feeling each week as a result of the workouts, what results you're seeing, that's gonna indicate to you which path you wanna go down. So for instance, one workout may be called inch loss. That's a part of the inch loss program. If you like that workout or you're seeing that you're like really liking the results of that workout, that may indicate to you inch loss is a direction you wanna go in. There's workouts called cardio tone. You may like cardio tone more. All right, that indicates to you more what you like. And this is important because as you get more familiar with Hamlin, you'll see which path you wanna go down. So start with that Facebook group, leverage the resource of the community, ask questions that you have, and really look to become an expert on this. That is a great way to start. But realize that three week rotation is not reflective of the program that you're gonna go with, all right? It just indicates to you where you lean towards, what you favor most. Track, track with progress photos, track with measuring yourself, tracking with weight, although some people like to track with weight, I don't find that that's a metric to me that really matters so much. There have been times where I look extra lean and I weigh more than ever. And supposedly that even has to do with, now that I do intermittent fasting, there's something called body recomposition that can happen where you may look more in shape, but your weight is redistributing where you may have gained weight, you may be the same weight, but it's not reflective of the direction you're going in. So that's one of the reasons why I don't really weigh myself. It's not to me, for me, it's not a metric that reflects my progress. Measuring myself and taking progress photos is great. I need to do a better job of it. I don't take progress photos like I should. I just need a better progress photo setup. But track because you may think to yourself, oh, I don't know that I noticed that much of a difference. But then you look at progress photos and it's a different story. Because when you see yourself every day, day in and day out, you're not gonna notice the changes that happen over time. As with every workout, you really do yourself a favor when you make it enjoyable. 
make it fun. And fun and enjoyable is different for everyone. You may like to have your workout time be more of a zen, unplug time. For me, I find it as a time for me to kind of like feel good about myself. Like really choose songs that make me feel sexy and to pay attention to the progress and definition I'm starting to see and focusing on that. I, it makes, that's my kind of fun. Uh, I've been told that the genre of music I like is stripper music. I prefer to call it motivational stripper music um, because it's just motivating, but also makes you feel sexy. Um, you know, that's kind of my music genre. Don't judge me. You can, if you want to follow me on Spotify and see how, how, <laughs> And, and want to see what I'm talking about, you're more than welcome to, but you've got to make it enjoyable. I also have found that my workouts are great, much, much better now that I have a really good set of headphones that don't fall out of my ears. I have the fancy AirPods. My, my ear canals must be a weird shape because none of the earbuds fit me well. My sister recommended to me like these wireless Beats by Dre headphones that really sit in your ear nicely. They don't fall out. I can talk on the phone with them. They're great. It makes my workout so much more enjoyable. That's key. Get yourself a make space, a, make a good workout space. Get yourself a mirror. It can even be a cheat mirror. Connect with yourself, get some good tunes, make it enjoyable. You will do yourself a big favor by doing that. In line with making your workout more enjoyable, one of the tips I'd gotten from Hamlin during our consultation was to set your intention ahead of the workout. What do you want to get out of the workout? You know, do you want to be present during the workout? Setting your intention. I'm doing more of this since that consultation, which is about a week ago, and I really see the value in it because like anything else, just by setting an intention can change the trajectory of whatever it is you're doing. My next tip is to get into it. You can follow along with the moves and flop around, but you're really gonna feel it and get the benefit of the workout when you really engage your muscles and get into it. I fade in and out of this as sometimes I just kind of start thinking about other things, but I'm constantly bringing myself back to being present and really engaging my muscles. Uh, one of the tips Hamlin gave me was even to visualize what my muscles are doing. So just a great way to stay connected and get an even better workout. With whatever workout you do, you can make it much easier or much more challenging. It's really up to you. But I really find I like to feel, act as if I'm moving underwater and there's resistance I'm feeling. But it's, it's a constant practice as I fade in and out of having an attention span. Another tip from Hamlin was to document how you feel each week out of your workouts, or even to document how you feel at the end of each workout. Take note of what you like about it, how you felt, what contributed to you feeling better or not better. He, you can tell that he's really about each individual making the best choices for them and keeping in mind that everyone's different. And my consultation alone, even when I would ask him questions related to diet or the best time to work out during the day, he always went back to choosing what feels best for you. When it came to nutrition, he talked about how he believes everybody should work with a nutritionist if they're looking to go somewhere specifically. Um, but he's very much about what, the, what works best for the individual, which I really appreciate because we are all so different in every facet. How can we have one, one prescription to capture everyone? We can't, everyone's so different. So in the Hamlin consultation that I had, it ended up being an hour, but it's typically 30 minutes. I think I was just lucky and that he had some buffer time. He was just very generous and that I was going on tangents and our conversations was going in different directions. And so I was really lucky that I got an hour, but I was misinforming last week when I said that the consultation is an hour long as it is scheduled for 30 minutes, but I did not realize that. One of the things we talked about was the power of visualization because I really think that's one of the reasons why I've evolved in the way I want to is because of visualization. And we had talked a lot about that. And he 
you know, in addition to setting an intention ahead of the workout, he talked about visualizing during the workout. And we really related on that. I don't know that I even realized I had been doing that. I have taken on this habit of when I look in the mirror, I see more so the potential or I see, I focus on the good. I focus on the definition that's evolving over, oh my gosh, there's this area of cellulite or, oh my gosh, there's this back fat I have. Even if I see those things, because of course I notice them, I think, okay, well, this is going to evolve over time. I don't make a, make a thing about it. I instead really tune in on, oh my gosh, look at how I'm seeing this definition here. Or, and in that way, it does make the workout more enjoyable if you're praising yourself over picking out every little flaw you have. So visualize during your workout is a major tip. Tack on to that. If you can't make time for it to do a visualization after your workout, I find that it doesn't have to take long, but it's so powerful. And I know I've talked about that in other videos before too. Although I did mention this, that Facebook group has got to be your Hamlin Bible. The resources there, the expertise there is just so impressive. Be sure to take advantage of it. Within that Facebook group, I'll read uh, some comments around concerns of, I don't know if this is going to create bulk for me, or I'm worried about not getting the results if I take this approach. And there's a lot of reassurance that's provided in that group, a lot of reassurance. And I think when you're trying something new and you have doubt along the way, you need that support. Even if you're not on Facebook, just create just a dummy account. <laughs> I have two friends on my rundown with Rachel Facebook, two friends. Uh, to me, it's really just about connecting and being able to be a part of that community and just learn from it than it is about being active on Facebook. So even if you're not on Facebook, you can just create a little dummy account and um, request to join that Facebook group. Another tip I have is to push yourself when the time comes because in some of his workouts, especially the model workout, there are a lot of plank moves. There's a lot of slider moves that are a mother. They are tough. Like a majority of the workout, it's not too taxing, but during those moments of opportunity for you to go for it, you need to step up to the plate and do what you can. Obviously don't hurt yourself, but push yourself. And those sliders, oh my gosh, especially if they like take two minutes long. Lately, I've not been able to reach the two minutes, but I'm really pushing myself and I really see the benefit in doing that both from a strength perspective and like a personal trust perspective, as well as a corset effect that Hamlin talks about happening with those sliders. So push yourself when the time comes. I covered this earlier, but I do wanna to stress to start with that three week rotation. It is free. It gives you a nice sampling of what's available. And as you go through that three week rotation, I'd say don't judge the program based on that overall. Just know it's a sampling and tune into what you like most. When I did the three week rotation, I don't know that I, I, I did not get the dramatic results I did as much as when I did the model workout because I think the model workout is more in line with what I like and what works for me, much more cardio and a mix of like mat workouts. So if I were to assess Hamlin on that three week rotation alone, my enthusiasm wouldn't be as high as it is with doing the model workout. Out of that consultation I did, it does take 10 to two weeks for you to get your eight week customized workout. I haven't gotten it just yet, but when I do, I'll be really excited to see if I'm even more enthusiastic about that program. But once you do have an idea of what you like and you are somewhat versed in the Hamlin method, you have got to do yourself a favor and schedule a consultation with him. That will give you a chance to ask various questions that you have and to really feel even more connected to Hamlin himself. That consultation is so beneficial. And when it came to the questions I asked Hamlin, some of them included questions around the details of the movements. There are times where I notice where there is a standing portion he's doing and he'll lift up one heel 
and just like rotate his heels lifting. And I even asked him like, are those details important? And he shared with me, no, I just get so excited about it that I just, I, I don't know, I just lift my heel like that. Um, when I asked questions about nutrition or questions about time of working out, he went back to, it's about you as a person, what makes you feel best, that's what you've got to go with. And if you are looking to revise your diet, he recommended to work with a nutritionist. There were some things I didn't ask that I wish I did. One of them in particular is, or th there's these moves in the model workout where you're laying on the ground and sometimes like he'll lay his head down. I prefer to hold up my big head with my hand versus going down like that. And I don't know if that matters. That's something I wish I asked. If you know, please let me know if it matters. I just prefer to like hold, prop my head up. Um, I could have gone on and on. I wish I asked him why his workout is effective, like to, to get the formula. I, I wish I asked about that. But our conversation, it really was like having a great conversation with, with somebody that you met for the first time, but you just hit it off. And I just went on so many tangents with him. And, but all of his points were so, were so helpful. All these tangents were so helpful, but those are some of the questions I did wish I asked. Even though I had them written down, I think the excitement and on some level, I just kind of got distracted. And the big takeaway was, Throughout your week, throughout your day, throughout your life, you need to check in with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Just because everybody's doing something that they swear by, you've always got to look back to numero uno, what works for you, and to be your own advocate. And that is very much in line with my own values, especially given, you know, there's some people in my life that are like, are you really getting a workout? I think you should be lifting heavier weights. And I'm true to me. I love this. I love the way I feel. You can have your assessments about it. It's my life, you know what I mean? One last tip is to give it time. Give it time. And also be aware that you may have fluctuations in general. I have fluctuations twice a month. I get so bloated, I swear I feel like I gained 20 pounds and I want to just question everything I'm doing and start all over and throw everything out the window and like, and that's just what happens to me. I am working with a holistic doctor to see how I can improve that because maybe I shouldn't be fluctuating that much, but tune in, you may, you may have that fluctuation as well and you just gotta give it some time and be realistic and just, be in tune with how your body changes. I know some people will work out based on their cycle. I probably should look into that too, add it to my list of things to explore, but wanted to share that because some of us deal with that where we question everything because of water retention or the bloating through our cycle and just gotta give it some time. In a nutshell, that covers tips that I have for you if you're looking to get started with Hamlin, some tips I learned from Hamlin himself some things around the consultation that I didn't cover last week or got mis left out or kind of misinformation. I really just wanted to catch up with you like if we're catching up over brunch. And if you have tips, please be sure to share them below. Now that I have so much more momentum with Hamlin, I even have had a break of a week where I didn't work out and then you know, getting back into it, it's made me see how much I love the workout, how great I feel in doing it. It doesn't make me overly hungry. My body overall feels tighter and leaner. I am just so thankful to have this workout program that I can do conveniently at home and to be a part of such a supportive group and however I can help people to find this and get the same benefit as I do. I'm all for. So with that, thank you again for watching and I hope to see you next time.